someone That's asked about who was it that asked about the rapture? I did. Okay, reiterate your question on that. I said, do you believe in the rapture in the second coming? Okay, now let me respond to that. There are two yeah, different I, times, right? Uh, well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't agree with that. No. But let me let me first respond to that before you chime in. So as far as the rapture, I know that the word rapture is not used in the Bible. So I have seen people, you know, say, oh, you know what a rapture is. A false okay, doctrine. if we go back to the wait, Hebrew, wait, 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 can I, can I, wait, wait a second. Can I please finish? Because if you were listening to what I was going to say, I was going to say, even though people out here say, oh, you know, rapture is false because the word's not in the Bible. I'm saying the word can be used and put into the scriptures because the word rapture just means to gather together. So when we read about Christ, say, for an example, Matthew 24, starting at, say, 29 on down. Right, speaks about how Christ is going to send the angels to gather together his elect. We could use the word rapture for that because he's just gathering the people together. So I would say, yeah, that the rapture is in the Bible. Even though the exact word is not used, it's appropriate to use by what we read in the scriptures. So as far as saying that the rapture and the second coming of Christ are two separate events, right? That, that, that's your idea of it? Right, right. That's my idea. Okay. Yeah, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't agree with that. And I, I can, um, I'll show you why I have that position. Bear with me a moment. Okay, hold on. Pull up the scripture. All right, we'll start at um. Yeah, we'll start here. Um, Matthew, Matthew twenty four twenty nine. It says, immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of the heaven to the other. Right. So here we see Christ is revealed. And then after he is revealed, he's going to send his angels to gather together his elect wherever they'll be scattered. And then another good scripture with this, Revelation 1 7, behold, he comes with clouds and every eye shall see him. Right. Everybody's going to see Christ when he returns. So as a counter to what you were saying, I like your position on what I just read there, because we clearly see Christ returning, and then after Christ returns, we see him send his angels to gather together his elect where they were scattered on earth. What's your response to that? Well, you know he's coming back again to judge the earth after he takes his children home first thing, and then he's coming back with his saints to judge the earth. So for some reason, the saints are up there with him, and he's coming back. And he's going to set up his kingdom here. Hey, hey, hey! TX is talking. I'm sorry. He's going to set up his kingdom here on the earth for a thousand years. First, he's going to take us home. He likes going home. And then he's coming back with his election to judge the earth. And he's going to land on Mount, uh, in Jerusalem. I think it's Mount, Mount of Olives. Mount of Olives. He's going to land. He's actually going to land here the first and time. when he actually touches down, there's going to be a great earthquake. Yeah, and the first time, he's just coming in the clouds. We're going to see him, and we're going to meet him in the air. When he comes back the second time, he's actually landing on Mount of Olives. If you ever see the picture of Mount of Olives, how many tombs they have on Mount of Olives, it's, it's outrageous. Yeah, I, I've seen that. They, they, <laughs> make pay a lot, they make people pay a large amount of money to be buried there because they... They want to be close to Christ when he returns. I know what you're talking about. So that's two different things. You agree? Well, well I, I, first of all, I, I'm familiar with the position you have on it because that's a popular idea, but I don't agree with that. So that's okay. Why not? Hold on. Let me keep finishing. Because when, when Christ returns, that's going to be, as it calls it, the great day of his wrath, right? The great day of his wrath is oh. going to be the day that he returns. I'll give an example. Was that Revelation, the sixth chapter? Let me grab that real quick. Give me a second. When is that? What, what, what time frame is that going to take place at? The wrath part. Hold on a second. When EPT is done, can you look up 1 Thessalonians 4.17? Yeah, he about to go to the wrong verse or the wrong chapter. It's not in that chapter. That's not the wrath part. Hold on a second. Melody? Yeah, he about to go to the wrong verse or the wrong chapter. It's not in that chapter. That's not the wrath part. Hold on a second. <laughs> Okay, hold on, hold on, I got it. Okay, so, um, wait, Melvin, real quick, you said I had the wrong chapter, right? Yeah, that's why I asked right. you, when is the wrath fulfilled? I'll address that, but first let me make my point so I don't forget it. But real quick, you said that I was incorrect about the wrath of God being here, right? I said you're going to the wrong place in the Bible, and I asked a question, when is the wrath going to happen? What, what time frame? What do you mean by time frame? You're talking about the, uh, what is that, Revelation 16th chapter dealing with the, the final uh, bowls of wrath, right? Yeah, that's when the wrath is going to be poured out, right? Well, it's it, not uh, in the sixth chapter. That's when the trumpets are blown, and that's not called the wrath okay, of God. Okay, hold, hold on a second. Let, let, me, let me read a verse real quick. 
Now, going back to what I mentioned earlier, this is Revelation 6 and verse 16. It says, and said to the, actually start up a little bit. You know what, let me even, okay, I'll give, I'll give the context. Revelation 6 and 14, it says, And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island they were moved out of their places, and the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sits on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Right, so my position, going back to what I was saying with TX Depp, our position as the BHI, We'd say that when Christ returns, that's the, the that great and terrible day of the Lord. The rapture is going to happen on that day, and Christ is going to, from that moment forth, is going to judge these nations, and he's going to set up the, the kingdom of heaven. So when so Christ comes down here, he, he's staying down. So is that when he's in the air? That's when we meet the Lord in the air in the rapture? Or is that when he comes back again the second time? Well, we, we don't hold the position that he's coming back a second time. We, we wouldn't hold that position. So when is he going to... Uh, Take the saints home, and then the saints coming back to judge the, the earth? How's that going to work, according to your understanding? Could you pull me up the scripture on that? Do you believe that he's coming back two times, ATT? I, I don't see where it says he's coming back two times. That's a Christian idea, not, not a, a BHI one. Okay, so 1 Thessalonians uh, says... But, but hold on a second. I'm familiar. I am familiar with the idea because I was raised in the Christian church, so I do know about the idea, as I've been saying. So um, go, go ahead with your statement. Okay, 1 Thessalonians 4, 17 says, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. What What's caught up mean to you? Well, the obviously... That means he, we're caught up into the air, right? Yeah, it, obviously this is going into what I brought out earlier about that they'd be called up with the um, with the Lord. And what scripture are you at, by the way, just so I can pull it up myself? 1 Thessalonians 4, 17. <laughs> we are caught up together in the clouds with the... Um, ones that came out of the graves, right? We all meet up there. We meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Okay, so what you're telling me is once he does that, he's going to turn around right away, you know, bring us all right back to earth, and have Armageddon. Okay. Now, that's, what I, that's what I'm getting out of what you're telling me. Okay, now hold on, hold on a second. Now notice that you read this. I don't think you did this on purpose, but you read it a little bit out of context, because if we start above it, uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, it says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, and the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be brought up together, or called up together, excuse me, with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. <laughs> it's still meeting in the air. That's the only part I was trying to get to you is we're meeting in the air. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're, they're meeting They're meeting in the air. I'm, I'm I'll not say, sure. nowhere in them two verses that you just read to me does it say that he's going to step down on the earth. Wait a second. Okay, well, what do you think about this? It says, this is back in verse 16. It says, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout. What does it mean to descend? He's coming down. He's coming down in the clouds. Yeah, he's coming down in the clouds. And we will meet him in the air. Now, here's where we'd have a disagreement because heaven in this context is talking about the sky above our head. But that, that's a whole different conversation right there. Yes. Um, so, okay, so, so hold on a second. So what I'm saying is, yeah, Christ is going to return. He's going to rapture together his his elect, and then the um, Christ is going to destroy Babylon the Great, which is the United States of America. But the elect are going to be on the earth while the the um, the last plagues are being poured out. That really? is the we have yes. Okay, um, okay, so wait. I don't understand okay. that. He's saying that we're going to meet in the air, and then he's going to pour out plagues. Is he just going to pour them all out on the earth all at one time? Is that what the Bible says, or do four different horsemen come at different times? Well, we, we'd say that some of that stuff's already happened, so that, that's an entire different conversation right there. It happens during the seven-year tribulation period, right? Well, well I, I wouldn't... Are we living in the seven-year tribulation? Well, I mean, that, that depends on, on who you talk to. I wouldn't say it's a seven-year uh, period. It's a, it's a certain period of time, but to say that there's an exact year... Three and a half and three and a half makes seven, if you ask me. This word here for heaven means where uh, Christ uh, is, uh, basically, right now. But in the in the Bible, heaven can mean the sky above our head. But that that's an entire different concept. I'll give you but in this context oh, right okay. here. First Thessalonians four sixteen is talking about this heaven is the abode which Christ ascended. Which means ascend. Okay, Melvin, you agree that people, as in the the flesh and blood, we cannot physically get to heaven where God is, right? You agree with me on that? 
I never you said flesh and blood can't get into the kingdom. That's why I always said that there's going to be no, respect no, you first. No, then hold, hold on a second. There's, there's a reason. There's a reason why I asked this. That's going exactly along with what we brought up. I just did not want to misunderstand what you're saying. So I just asked if you be in agreement that man cannot get to where God is in heaven right now. You agree with me on that, right? No, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. There go the scripture. Okay, cool. There's a reason I, I asked that. So in Amos nine and two, it says, "Though they dig into hell, I shall take them. Though they climb up to heaven, that shall I bring them down." That word they're used for heaven is talking about in the sky. Okay, so so we see that heaven can be the sky in the Bible, depending on the context. Yeah, but you're going to the Hebrew. This is in Greek. You do understand that, right? I, I understand that. Then why are you going to the Hebrew word when we're reading in the Greek because passage? It, be, because it goes by the context in the verse. No, this doesn't. I just showed you the context in the verse. Now, if I go to the Hebrew and show you the context in this verse that you brought up, talking about though they climb up to heaven, it's going to mean it's in the sky. It's not talking about the heaven which Christ ascended to after his resurrection. Which which part is that? Is that in the sky or is that in the actual heaven? Well, well that that part would be with the with the Father in, in that in that heaven. Okay, so that's where it's mentioned in First uh, Thessalonians four sixteen. That's all I'm saying. All right, I'll respect your viewpoint on that. So anyway, going back to what we were saying, right? It was about the. Uh, Okay, so let, let me say this going back to what we were saying. So your guys' position, right, uh, TX Staff and Jessica, your position is that God's going to redeem his elect before the, the Great Tribulation, right? Right. Okay, cool. So, so the elect's not going to be here on earth. God's people are not going to be here on earth. They're not going to have to worry about anything because they're going to be raptured out of here, correct? Well, the church is the church. is a, is a, a time period for the church, and that's like all the Gentiles and all that that are going to get saved up under Christ. And then the, he's coming back to get us all out right here, but he's still going to work with Israel. Because you've got to do a special work with Israel. Okay, but but God's elect, like like his chosen people, they're going to be raptured out of here first, right? Yes, sir. Okay, cool. So so we, we call them the, the elect, right? God's chosen people, they're going to be raptured out of here before right. any of these calamities take place. You agree, right? Right. Okay, cool. There's a reason why I asked you that. Um, going over here to Matthew 24, uh, verse 21, I'm going to start at. It says, for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor shall it ever be. And except those days shall be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So what it's saying here is that the elect's going to be on the earth during this great tribulation because the days of the great tribulation are being shortened for their sake. What do you think about that scripture? Okay, what I think about that is there are still people here on earth that once they see their family members go up and are raptured out of here, are they not going to believe? Because they knew, they were told that... God was coming back for his people. Okay, but there's a special they, were, they were riding that fence. Riding oh, that fence. Okay. I tell this, don't ride the fence. Oh, okay, let, let me chime in then on that, because there's a problem with this. I asked you guys specifically beforehand, because it says the elect, right? God's chosen people. They're going to be raptured out of here, you guys said. So I was like, okay, cool. But the verse, <laughs> wait, 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 let me, please let me finish, and then you can chime in. But the verse says that those days, the days of the great tribulation, they're going to be made shorter. They're going to be shortened for the elect's sake. So if the elect wasn't here to have to worry about any of these things on earth, why would those days have to be shortened for the elect's sake if they were all already raptured out of here? So nothing down here would affect them. Who's the elect in this context? Didn't believe until after the rapture. The Jewish, the Jews too. The Jews, the Jewish people. It's the elect, it's talking about the, um, well, we read about them in Revelation 7, right? The God's elect. Yeah, and doesn't it mention all nations in verse 9? Well, well that, that's another subject matter. <laughs> but you just brought the subject up. That's in the same chapter. How's it another subject matter? But hold, hold on, but Melvin, but hold on. The conversation that we're having is about now. Who now? If anyone wants to say the elect or whoever, for the sake of this particular conversation, that's irrelevant. The point that I'm saying. You brought it up. You said in Revelation seven, that's where the elect are mentioned. What was you going to go to? Uh, four hundred, one hundred forty-four thousand. So, so Melvin, you haven't been paying attention because the word elect was just used in the verse I read in Matthew. Did you know that? No. You cut out. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know that. I didn't go to that verse and ask you who are the okay. elect. Who are the elect in that context? Okay. You, didn't so just, you ran just, to you ran to Revelation seven from this, and then you gonna sit up there and say I'm switching okay. it? No. No, not not exactly. Because you just said it. You didn't know that the word elect was used in my verse there, right? So, I didn't uh, say that. See how you throwing words in my mouth? I said who okay, no, are no, the no, elect no, in this chapter? That's what I said. Play it back. Now you, you don't got to act childish like that and talk. Like on slow mode, I, I can hear you perfectly. Well, maybe so, you're not understanding because you keep saying stuff that I didn't say. I think maybe you need to take a chill pill because, first of all, the question was not even. I think you need to clear the earwax out your ears. All right, man, why don't you just take the back seat, man? Because all you're doing is uh, is adding difficulty to this conversation. 
So, okay, thank you very much. So going back to what we were talking about, I simply went here because they said that the elect going to be taken away before the Great Tribulation. I was like, okay, cool. But here it's telling you that the days of the Great Tribulation are going to be made short for the elect's sake. So we see the elect are still on the earth during the Great Tribulation. Well, one thing about ETT, there's some people believe pre-tribulation, some people believe mid-tribulation, some people believe post-tribulation. So it's kind of a mystery. It's kind of a mystery. The only thing is we need to be sure we're ready. We want to be sure we're ready because when the Lord comes, he's going to come as a thief in the night. He's not going to knock at your door. Hey, y'all ready? No, we need to be ready when he comes back. Hey, hey can you read this top portion just, just, just to entertain me real quick? Oh, okay. You're talking to me. Um, let me see. It says to obtain salvation through Christ. Then it says uh, Christians are called, which I don't know that word there, the chosen or elect of God. That's what the highlighted text says. Yeah, that's why I was asking you in the context of Matthew 24, you see your verses sitting right there underneath that. Okay, but but even going by this context, it still proves my point because the believers... It doesn't prove your point because now I know where Melvin's going with it. Okay, but you see, you're, you're trying to bring up two different subject matters. Now, whatever you would believe the elect are, that's a different subject matter. But the only reason that's relevant is because you guys said that they're going to be taken out of here before the Great Tribulation. But the verse says that these people are not going to be taken out before the Great Tribulation. That's the okay. I have an answer for you. See, this is the same verse you use, so how am I taking it somewhere else? I'm just saying. The elect that he's going to take with him at first are the Christians who believe. Okay? Then he's going to deal with the Jews who are also his elect, but they didn't believe that Jesus was his son who came to die for them on the cross. And they were left here during the rapture when he came and got them. So they are also his elect, which were left here. So yeah, he's going to shorten the days for the Jews so they don't have to live through that, that tribulation period. Okay, now now dealing with this, where does it say, because you, you agree with me, obviously, that Christ returned one time, right? In the past, we, we all can agree Christ returns twice. Okay. twice. Oh, okay, but well, hold on a second. So we agree Christ came to earth one time in the past. Okay, we both agree on that. Wait, please let me finish before you chime in. So now I I would agree that Christ is going to make a second return, and everybody and everyone's waiting for that, the second return of the Messiah. I agree there's going to be a second return, but now the question is, what's this third return? Where, where can I read about it? There's no third return. There's a second return. So, okay, so let me just clarify that. So you're telling yes. me that, Wait, wait, you, you have to, in order to respond, you have to first understand the question that I'm saying in order to oh. directly respond, right? Okay, so here's the thing. So you're saying, you guys are saying that Christ returns once to take away his elect, but then in the, in the future, past that time, they're going to come again with his elect, right? So I'm asking, where can I read about three comings of Christ in the Bible? Where do you get the term three comings of Christ? That's what I want to know. Okay, okay so, come so one? Okay, can I answer that? The rapture, yeah. to take his elect, Christians, Christians, they believe. Because... Oh, and the Jews that believe that Christ died on the cross for them. Okay, so so just to clarify. Those who don't believe are not going. Okay, okay, cool, cool. So just to clarify, when Christ returns to save the elect, you agree that that's a return of Christ, right? Right. Okay, cool. So where is this other coming of Christ? Jude 14. Jude 14. Talks about it. Jude 14. Melvin, go look it up for me, please. You said what? Jude 14. You want me to read it? Can you read it? And Enoch prophesied, I'm sorry, and Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed. And all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurs, complainers, walking after their own lust, and their mouths speak great swing words, having men's advantage, men's persons in admiration because of advantage. But beloved, remember ye the words which are spoken by the apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. How then the, how they told you that there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These are these are they who separate themselves, sexual, not having the spirit. So it's talking about Adam, Adam, I'm sorry, Enoch prophesied that the Lord is going to bring, come back with 10,000 of his saints. Now, he's going to land on Mount Olives. I'm not sure what that verse is at, but I know it's in there. He's going to land on Mount Olives. Zechariah 14. Yes, sir. But first he's coming. He's going to meet us. We're going to meet him in the air. So that's one separate event. And now, then he's coming down. Yes, sir. 
Okay. Now, our response to that as the, the BHI, we'd say that Christ is going to return, gather his elect, and then he's going to go with the elect to conquer these nations on earth. So it doesn't qualify as a, a third coming of Christ, but Christ is going to come one time, he's going to gather together his elect, and then they're going to go with Christ to take down these armies of the world. Right? Read about that. Uh, Revelation 19, uh, Jeremiah the 16th chapter, uh, Revelation the 16th chapter, multiple scriptures on that. So that would be my response. But I don't get where you got a third coming because the first coming is in the air. Okay, okay can I? That would be my response. But I don't get where you got a third coming because the first coming is in the air. Okay, okay can I? Okay, but but here's where you're you're not understanding. The first coming of Christ happened two thousand years ago. That was the first coming of Christ. The second coming of Christ is going to be, as you're saying, the, the, the rapture event, right? But then going by what you're saying, right? Christ is going to rapture the church and then go away for a while and then come again. So that would be another separate coming of Christ. So I'm asking, where can I read about three comings of Christ? The one happened in the past. The second coming is going to happen no, in the future. Two comings in the end, ETT. But We've been going over this for the last half hour. But you, the first you coming have, is when he meets in the air with his elect, well, I, I, which I are the Christians, right? I would, I would definitely disagree with that. And you agree that Christ already returned. Excuse me. Christ already came one time. You agree with me on that, right? Right. But, Jesus came. Yeah, he lived on the earth for thirty-three okay, years. Okay, so that that was that was a coming of Christ. You agree with me on that, right? Amen. The Messiah. Yes. Oh, yes. okay. right. But Jesus came. Yeah, he lived on the earth for thirty-three okay, years. Okay, so that that was that was a coming of Christ. You agree with me on that, right? Amen. The Messiah. Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. So you agree, going by your understanding, there's going to be a second coming, which is the rapture event. Correct. You'll, you'll see why. Right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So, so from that rapture event, Christ is going to come rapture together to believers. They're going to go away for a while while the great tribulation is happening for those here. On the earth. Wait, 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 let me finish. And then after all that, they're going to come back again to, I, I, I guess, as you guys say, you know, to save the people who came to faith in Christ. Right. So wouldn't that be a third coming of Christ then? By that logic, if you guys agreed with me that the two before were coming to Christ, but what logic could you then say the third example would, would not be considered a coming of Christ? Melvin, maybe you can help me out on this, but where does the third example would, would not be considered a coming of Christ? Melvin, maybe you can help me out on this, but where does it say that uh, when Jesus comes back for the Christians, their rapture out of here provokes the Jews who didn't believe that Jesus was the Messiah and died on the cross for our salvation into jealousy, which causes them to believe that Christ was who he God said, or he, who he said he was, and died on the cross, and they missed out on that. That's Romans 11. I think, you know what I'm talking about, I think, I think what you're talking about is when um, Paul went to the Jews, and, I mean, yeah, Paul went to the Gentiles, and the Gentiles were basically brought into the, basically grafted in to uh, provoke the Jews to jealousy. That first, I don't think, ties in with the second coming. That ties in with the grafting in. Right, but so, so, I, believe, I believe that that all happens at the end. We were grafted in, yeah. But he comes back, gets the Christians, which causes the Jews, because they don't believe right now that Christ died on the cross. If you, I mean, you can ask David. Oh, he's okay, still let's bring some, I, I got a, another one for you that I didn't bring this up yet, dealing with the same subject. Okay, okay. so let's, let's first establish this, and then I'll, I'll ask the real question of why I brought this up. So Babylon the great when at what coming of christ is this going to be destroyed is it going to be destroyed when he raptures the, the church or is it going to be destroyed when he comes the, the other time after the great tribulation you'll see why i'm asking but i need to clarify your position before i can ask the following question babylon is what is being destroyed when christ comes back and gets his chosen out of here i believe that we will be in great war when christ returns for the rapture Okay, so, so Babylon's going to be taken down when the rapture happens? We will be taken up as the bombs are coming down. Okay, so Babylon's the great is going to be destroyed before the Great Tribulation. Um, Babylon is destroyed. Then there are several other wars that happen during the seven-year tribulation. And at the very end of the seven-year tribulation, Armageddon happens where he comes back with his servant, or with his people. and. Okay, so... <laughs> But I, but I mean, the, the, hold on a second. But the destruction of Babylon is one of the main events in, in the uh, in the, the Revelation. That's why they have three chapters that are well, two of them are, are fully dedicated to it, and then the other one is partly dedicated to it. It's like a, a big event. So you're, you're telling you guys are telling me this happens before. I don't know. David David don't know. Me and David haven't been married very long. I learned this when I was growing up. Me and David have not discussed 
Yes, very much. And, and he times, says he doesn't believe that. I don't know too much about the end times. He doesn't no. know a lot about the end times. I know about getting so salvation. So he's saying that, no, he don't agree with. And receiving the Holy Spirit. I, know, I do know about that part. but so he not, He's not sure about that. You, you got the testimony of Christ, though, right? Yes. Could you tell me what that is? The testimony is Christ. The whole mystery of the faith is Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's the whole mystery of the faith. That's what the okay. prophets prophesied about all these times. Now Christ came, and if you accept him through faith, accept him into your heart, the Holy Spirit come in your heart, you have it in you, and it's the hope of glory. He's coming back to receive us. All right, cool, cool. But there's a reason I asked that, though, because Revelation chapter 19, verse 10, it says, I fell at his feet to worship him. And I'm nearly paraphrasing off the top of the head. He said, see that, do it not. I'm not, I'm not a fellow state, uh, servant. This is John talking to the angel. And then uh, the angel told him that the testimony of Christ is the spirit of prophecy. So what you see the Hebrew Israelites doing out on the street corners, prophesying to people about things soon to come, that's the testimony of Christ right there. As it says right there, the testimony of Christ is the spirit me, of prophecy. Yes, to me, to, to, say something before it happens. Yes, sir. to me, the testimony of Christ is witnessing to a person how they can receive Jesus Christ. And it's you just can't study the Bible and you receive it. There's a, there's a plan of salvation that God has, and they have to hear a preacher or someone that can witness to you and tell you about salvation, how you can receive Christ in your heart. You just can't. Because I had a girlfriend before, and she told me, oh, you just say this prayer, and God will come in your heart. Christ will change it. It never happened, ETT. It never happened until I was 24 years old, and then I heard that real man of God preach the gospel, and it did so. My spiritual ears came open, and I accepted Christ through him, through his gospel. He actually laid his hands on me and made sure I received the Holy Spirit. I didn't come up talking in tongues and all that. I didn't come out saying... But my eyes came open, my spiritual eyes came open, and the weight of sin just came off of me. And I knew I was born again. I knew it. I can't deny it. I knew I was born again. I knew I was born again. Okay. I got to me, that's, that's the witness of Christ, preaching okay. the tennis, tell some people about Christ. Yeah, I, I agree. That's a part of it. I, I never disagree with that. Uh, anyway, this is Revelation 18, verse 4. It says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. So you guys would say this happened before the Great Tribulation, right? Well, I came out from uh, the Catholic Church. I used to be a Catholic, and uh, <laughs> they don't believe, right? So wait, I sir. came out from them. Yes, sir. Wait, wait a second. You're saying that, that this Babylon is the Catholic Church? No, 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 sir. I don't know about Babylon. I'm talking about my own self. I don't know about Babylon oh, that much. Oh, okay, but, but there's there's a problem here. The her in this chapter is talking about deliverance from Babylon. The, the Lord's telling his people, to come out of her, as in the her is Babylon, so they'd be not okay. taking the sins. Wait, wait, let me finish. And then you well, how about you just read a little bit further down, and you'll you'll have your answer there, instead of what, using what, one what, verse to try and trip what, people up like the Pharisees did Christ? No, 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 no. no. Uh, first of all, I'm not trying to trip anyone up. I'm just sincerely asking the question, but now he brought up something else, so I, I wanted to respond to what he said. So, what he said... Where are you supposed been, to come out of when you leave out of, when you come out of Babylon? Can you oh, okay, uh, Melvin, hold on a second. I'm having a conversation with somebody. You can wait patiently, and then you'll get your question answered. So, going back to TX Step, because uh, maybe the brother misunderstood me, right? So I just want to give him a chance to clarify. So when he said that he came out of her, he uh, said that he came out of the Catholic Church, and then I, I wanted to give him a chance to respond and, and see if his position on it was if he believed that the her here was the Catholic Church, because I didn't know his position. So uh, you can go ahead and respond to your extent. He just told you that Babylon. He don't. He doesn't know about that. He just told you that if you were listening. Well, uh, th this is this isn't your your question, Melvin. I asked him to clarify his position because maybe because he confused me with his answer. So I'm giving him a chance to re-explain what, what he meant by it, because maybe he misheard me the first time. To me, to my understanding, it's the, the systems of men. It's the systems of the world. You know, the Bible says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. So that's what it's talking about. That's To me, that's Bible and the systems of the world. To love is Christ and come out from among them is loving Christ and not the systems of the world. One of the systems of the world is money. People love money. I mean, they go crazy about money. But the Bible tells us not to love money. Because the root of evil is, the root of all evil is the love of money. So that's a system. But but it says that Babylon's a great city though. So so, right. so I don't know about that part. I don't know. I mean, team, you know you're gonna try to say Babylon is America, but I don't know. Tell me, is America in the Bible anywhere? Have you? I mean, was America even a civilization I'll, during the Bible time? Ahead. I'll go ahead. I will respond to that question that you asked me real quick. That that was Jessica speaking, right? Yep. Okay. Cool. Cool. So um, I'll I'll respond to that. Um, you're asking me, is, is the word... So you asked my question, you're about to ask my question. I'll, I'll get to yours after I answer hers. So, uh, the word America... Don't ask a question. Answer her question and answer mine. If you're paying attention, I was literally responding to her question. Maybe you should keep your mouth yeah, shut. respond. Don't ask a question and then answer my question. Hey, hey, hey Babel, can, can you remove this guy from the chat room if you don't, if you don't mind, man, because this guy's just causing confusion. No, I'm a mod. Why would he do that? 
Okay, so so why are you trying to interrupt us while we're having a conversation, man? I'm not interrupting. I'm just letting you know. Answer a question and then answer mine. Don't ask no questions. And, and, oh, okay, now if you were paying attention, she asked me, is America in the Bible? And then I literally started to say that America... Dude, just answer the question and answer mine and don't ask her no question after you answer hers. That's all you got to do. Oh, oh, okay, now she asked me, is America in the Bible? And I know she asked me, is America in the Bible? And as I was explaining, the word America is not in the Bible, but we see references to America in the Bible. So if he, Melvin would have allowed me to finish my statement without really cutting me off, you would have seen I'm not asking a question, but rather I am answering the question that I am being asked. As the scriptures say, understand first and then repeat. What's your question, Melvin? What are you supposed to be coming out of when you come out of Babylon? Well, in, in this in this uh, scripture here, Revelation 18, what I'd understand this is talking about coming out of her philosophy and her, her ways of life. It's not what the verse says. So, so you're you're of the idea of, of hey the, Jamie, uh, Jessica's trying to get in the back. Melvin, you're of the idea of the flea doctrine. Do you know what that is? No, I don't know what that is. If I did, then I would I would be out of America. Oh, oh, I? oh okay. So, so are you saying that we have to leave America? Because if you're disagreeing, with I, didn't I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Oh, oh, I didn't. I didn't say. I, I was asking you if you had that position. I didn't say. No, I don't. That. That's what I'm saying. I just told you you're not listening. Okay, now, now obviously you're not paying attention because I, I was going to ask you to. You ask, you ask me one question. I'm trying to answer, and then you following up with another question while I'm answering the question. You know, I just got a question for you. Why does it seem like you're always pissed off about something, man? It's like take a chill pill, man. We're all trying to. to well, to stop cutting me off in the middle of my sentence. And let me finally answer your but, question. But you, but you haven't been doing it to me the whole show. Come on, I ain't man. been doing the whole show. You said the whole show. Well, stop Friendly. cutting me off in the middle of my sentence. And let me finally answer your but, question. But you, but you haven't been doing it to me the whole show. Come on, I ain't man. been doing the whole show. You said the whole show. <laughs> I mean, anyone can go back and listen to that. Pretty much. Yeah, the whole I was sitting here quietly during the whole show until a couple of spots. Right, right, so it right. wasn't the whole show. Okay, but just so I don't have to hear you whine, go ahead and ask me your question. I asked you. Uh, you, already, you already answered it wrong, and I told you that. Okay, so tell me the correct answer. It's right in front of your face. Read the screen. I cannot see the screen because it's too small. Could you please read it? Huh? <laughs> Obstacle. And we'll get back with you in a second, Jessica. Mike's just going, uh, excuse me, I'm Elvin just going to one side. You could address them. I'm just, you could read the screen while you while they asking you a question and addressing you. I was just right. throwing that in there. Oh, oh okay. So, so we'll, we'll say this. So I am wrong with my understanding, but then when I asked the brother to clarify me and, and um, give me some knowledge of what it's talking about, he can't do it. I'm like, showing you the screen. Read the, the screen. Can you keep walking through bubblegum? I, I actually read this scripture before, so what? What? Well, read it again. The, okay, you said, so, you said this. This verse talks about coming out of philosophy. This is talking about coming out of the sins. If you if you know how to read, so the philosophies are not equal with with the sins of America. Does is philosophy brought up in this chapter? No, philosophy. I, I believe it is. I'd, I'd have to go back and double. No, check it's not. But it, it's brought up in the, the chapter before. No, it's not. Well, I mean, that's a point of contention, but we'll, we'll agree to disagree on that. So we'll, we'll go back to Jessica then. Go ahead. ATT, I think we all know in part, the Bible tells us, you know, we all know in part, when Christ comes back, we're going to know, like, is, everything's going to be revealed to us then. But for right now, we all know in part. I was going to ask you about, does God love all nations? 